Last week on the program, GT Ogunye spoke extensively on the constitutional provisions for the transmission of powers to the vice president whenever the president is proceeding on vacation. But a law graduate student of the University of Lagos, Tumini Nukolawili, does not quite agree with Mr. Ogunye's submissions. Well, section 145, subsection 1 and 2 of the constitution uh, is the governing provision. And it simply provides that whenever the president is proceeding on a vacation or is otherwise unable to discharge the functions of his office, he shall transmit a written declaration to the president of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives stating so. Uh, to this effect, and thereafter, uh, the vice president shall, for the period while the president is away or so unable to discharge the function of his office, act as the president. Now, that's subsection one. Subsection two, of course, uh, came via uh, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria first alteration. 2010, and it was uh, in consequence of what happened in 2009 uh, when there was an impasse uh, arising from the illness of the late uh, president of Nigeria, Umaru Musa uh, Yaradua, and uh, the doctrine of necessity. And that amendment came into, in, into play, and it's to the fact that if the president fails or refuses or is unable to uh, transmit that declaration to the National Assembly within 21 days, then the National Assembly shall, by a simple majority resolution, authorize the Vice President to act as the President. And until the President then transmits a similar declaration to the effect that is now available to discharge the function of his office or his return from vacation to the National Assembly, uh, the Vice President shall continue to act as uh, the President. That is what the provision is. Now, what is the interpretation here? The interpretation is very clear. And, of course, we have many decisions of a Supreme Court to the effect that uh, the provision of the constitutions are to be interpreted liberally without stultifying narrowness. And even when we recognize that under section 318 of the Constitution, which is the interpretation section, vacation is not defined. And even when we do not have any need to have recourse to the canon of interpretation, one can say very liberally that vacation will include private visits, bed rest, uh, private uh, holiday, uh, etc., etc., uh, as the president has embarked on right now, which is bringing about this issue. And so we have no hesitation in concluding that this president ought to have made that transmission, ought to have made that written declaration before proceeding on this vacation? Um, I feel that section 145, sub 1 and sub 2, creates um, three instances in which you know, the president may or may not you know, pass um, across his letter if he's going to be out of the country. So I feel that section 145, sub 1, provides for a vacation and when he's otherwise unable to do so. However, section, um, subsection 2 of section 145 I feel pro br brings about another instance whereby the um, president may choose not to, you know, transfer the letter, pending the fact that he will not be away for up to 21 days. You know, sec subsection two states that he, if he's unable or otherwise unable to do so, or he fails to do so, I feel the introduction of the word or, you know, creates a disjunction between otherwise unable to do so and you know fails so i feel that the word fails then creates an instance whereby the president
can choose or deliberately then decide not to you know transfer the letter knowing that he will not be away for up to 21 days at the end of the day so to the extent that the president knows that he will not be away for up to 21 days and with the introduction of the word all fails i feel that um, the president can then choose not to transmit the letter as long as it will not be around for up to you know as long as he'll be he will not be away for up to 21 days so I feel that's, that's my own interpretation. Now, whether the intendment, you know, would serve injustice is a, is a different question, or it begs another question. For me, the introduction of the word fails has nullified whether or not it's a vacation or not. So vacation is almost not even relevant because the, the constitution has empowered him to, whether to disclose or not to, to transmit or not to transmit at the end of the day. So the constitution has given him that power whether he wants to or he doesn't want to, whether it's on a vacation, whether it's on a private visit, whether it's on a tour, whether it's on anything, the Constitution says he can fail. So now what, what he's failing for is not really then our business or our issue, do you understand? Because at the end of the day, the Constitution has already empowered him not to transmit the letter as long as he's not away for a certain period of time, which is 21 days. What viewpoints do you support? Please share your opinions with us via any of our social media platforms. And on the home stretch, let's bring you a recap of some of the top trending stories we tracked at the courts. We begin with the report that the Supreme Court has given reasons for the dismissal of the appeal filed by the People's Democratic Party and its candidate, Atiku Abubakar, challenging the return of President Muhammad Buhari. The court said that the president is eminently qualified to contest for the 2019 presidential elections as the former VP failed to prove that President Buhari is not educated up to secondary school level. Justice John Okoro, who read the submissions of the CJN, held that the failure of the appellants to call credible witnesses was fatal to their case as they presented only five witnesses, including a star witness who relied on hearsay evidence. <laughs> Still in Abuja, the Court of Appeal has upheld the victory of Ifa Inokoa as governor of Delta State. The court dismissed the case filed by the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Great Oboru, on the March 2019 governorship elections for lacking in merit. In a unanimous decision by a panel of five justices, the appeal court ruled in favor of Governor Okoa on the ground that the appellant was unable to prove the case. In Ibadan, the Court of Appeal sitting there has affirmed the victory of the People's Democratic Party governorship candidate in the state and validated the appeal of the All Progressives Congress, APC. The court says it disagrees with the tribunal judgment on grounds that the documents submitted were not properly processed while the evidence submitted by the appellant was not adequately evaluated. It further stated that this, however, does not give sufficient grounds to tamper with the victory of Shei Makinde as declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission. <laughs> Away from election cases, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has fixed November the 20th to hear the suit filed by the Police Service Commission challenging the powers of the Inspector General of Police to recruit constables into the force. At the last hearing of the case, counsel to the plaintiff, Kanu Agabi, informed the court that he needs time to respond to the processes of the Attorney General of the Federation, who was recently dragged into the suit by the counsel representing the IGP, Alex Ezignon. In the suit, the Police Service Commission had sued the Nigeria Police Force, the Inspector General of Police and the Minister of Police Affairs, challenging the powers of the IGP to recruit constables without recourse to the Commission. In Lagos, the trial of Abdullahi Babalele, son-in-law to the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, continued at the Federal High Court. Mr. Babalele is being tried on a two-count charge of laundering $140,000 in the build-up to the 2019 general elections. At the proceedings, the first prosecution witness, Bashir Muhammad, who described himself as a close friend of Babalele, read out in court certain portions of an extrajudicial statement he made to the EFCC during investigations which state that he did not personally give the sum of $140,000 to former President Olusha Gunobasanjo, contrary to his oral testimony. In his address to the court, Senior Advocate of Nigeria Michael Zekome said even from the testimony of its first witness, the EFCC's case has started to crumble. The EFCC, however, says this is not true. 
Justice Aneke has adjourned the case till the 29th and 30th of January 2020. And that's our program this week. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to catch the repeat on air or watch via our YouTube channel. I'm Shola Sheyeli. See you next week.